Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I'm just gonna be taking a look at something that's been going on with our inverter. Uh, it's a problem that I think I've caused, and we're gonna try to find a solution. Okay, so I've got the inverter right here, and I think what's been going on is that, well, it's trying to power things when it should not be trying to power things. It really comes down to the fact that I've integrated it into our transfer switch, and these transfer switches are wired in such a way that if we look at the, uh, if we look at the labeling, it says generator on one side, power cord in the middle, so that's our shore power, and then the control panel is out to our you know, main, main breaker panel inside. And when I first installed this, I didn't know enough about the electricity and the workings of the, well, the, the whole electrical system in an RV, and absolutely nothing about transfer switches or generators, because this is our first transfer switch, and we've never owned a generator. So we've noticed when we're going into different parks and we've had the inverter on for the drive, when we plug into park power, everything clicks on and we've got 120 volts or 240, depending, uh, coming into our uh, EMS and that works just fine. But then we go inside, we'll turn on the air conditioner and things will turn off, the inverter starts beeping, and it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me until we were in, uh, we were in the blizzard uh, a few weeks ago in, in March, and we had a power outage. We didn't have any air conditioners on, but we did have some space heaters that we forgot to turn off because those aren't going to be powered by this inverter. Um, but what was happening was the power would click over and yeah, it just, it just wasn't keeping things on. Our TV kept jumping on and off. There was periods of unavailability of power inside. So yeah, it was, it was just kind of really confusing. So I went and I looked up the manual for this transfer switch, which I had never done before. And I'll put a link to it below. This is a WIFCO WFCO uh, WFT57R. We'll make sure that you can see that on the screen. And what this, what this transfer switch does, and it may be the same for others. I don't know about other models, but if you have this one for sure, when you have your aux power connected to the generator, it wants to use that as the primary primary source of power and when that generator is off it automatically switches over to your power cord the reason that is is because generators need to be cycled on and off and they have to have load on them you know every couple of weeks few weeks i don't know the exact time frame but there's cycling with load that needs to happen to keep that generator in good shape and so what that allows to happen is when you kick on your generator, it automatically takes that as the power it wants to use so that you can exercise it. Now, with an inverter situation, that's not the case. I want it the opposite. I want the inverter only to run if I don't have shore power. So for us, I'm gonna swap these. The shore power, I'll switch over to the generator so that if I am plugged in, I'm gonna automatically have 120 volts or 240, whatever the case may be, coming in on that primary line. And then when the power goes out, it will switch over to this center section here, and that will provide me with the voltage coming in from the inverter. So let me grab a screwdriver. We'll swap these over. So I'm gonna go ahead now 
my my voltmeter is not calibrated to zero for some reason i don't know that it can be calibrated but if i turn on the inverter we get up to 120 volts pretty much right away so now i will go turn on the breaker for the shore power and we're going to see what happens I've turned the breaker on and the EMS should be going through its startup cycle, which means it's going to take about a minute, minute and a half to switch over. And that immediately switched over. And I can hear that the battery charger has kicked on. Now we're going to Turn the, break, the breaker off for the RV, and we'll see how quickly that changeover occurs. Park power goes out, what happens? Well, we're still seeing that 119 volts that we had, so the inverter is working as it should. Now we're gonna tr try a more uh, realistic experiment. Can you tell me in a moment if that light goes off? If that light goes off, okay. we have one 120 volt lamp. So I've asked Rachel to tell me if the light goes off. So park power comes back on. We'll wait for the changeover to occur. Did it flip off? No. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time. So essentially that was zero interruption, which is what I was looking for. Park power goes out. Okay, so we've had a couple of power cycles and that's like to simulate if, you know, the park power is going in and out in a storm or whatever. So it looks like it has successfully done what I wanted it to. I'm going to go ahead, turn uh, on the park power one more time, or sorry, turn off all of this power and get these cords out of here. I don't want to create any sparks. Okay, we've dropped down to zero and disconnect this and this and this and we'll button it back up all right i think that does exactly what i wanted it to it should allow us to run that inverter while we're not connected to shore power you know when we are on the road it will only power the RV when we have successfully disconnected shore power. So I think that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now when we pull into a park, I'll be able to plug in. And as soon as I hear that click over from the progressive EMS, it'll allow us to turn on those air conditioners and cool things down inside. So hopefully if you've been having issues with your inverter and on and off problems like what we have, um, hopefully that helps you out. Uh, that's kind of the goal here is just to share my learnings as I go through and figure things out. So let us know if you knew that in the comments down below or whether this was news to you. Thanks guys for watching. That's all for this episode. My name's Todd. This is the Alcohol Free RV and we're just here trying to help you out. So hopefully you enjoyed it and we will see you next time.